You're listening to Workers Radio Sydney on 88.9 Radio Skid Row. I'm here with Dave, Dave Eden. Now, uh, we've got um, our special guest on the air with us. Uh, we've got Franco Collins with us. Uh, he's the author and open source knowledge and uh, truth system of law, society and wellbeing and balance called the Ukada model. Um, he's written uh, a lot about the books of the canon law. Um, he's got websites uh, one-heaven.org, um, one-evil.org, e- um, and ukadia.com, www.ukadia.com. And you, University of Ukadia. Frank, are you with us there? Can you hear us? I am. Hello, Jack. How are you going? Good, mate. And you're from Sydney as well. Yeah, well, I was born in Melbourne, but I've been in Sydney for, well, almost 20 years now. Yeah. Well, I... I I came here, believe it or not, because I thought the weather would be better. Yeah. Well, it hasn't been. Our summer has been clouded. <laughs> <laughs> climate change. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> uh, I'm not too sure. Yeah, I'm not too sure about this global warming. Mm, yeah. Now, the 21st, of the uh, 12th, uh, 2011, um, it's an interesting time. Uh, I've listened to you. Anastasia knows a lot about your stuff. Uh, for the listeners, I just give us a brief history about yourself and... Um, how you come about? You've got so much stuff on um, one um, hyphen dot heaven dot org and one. I mean, I've looked at your websites and it's just got incredible, incredible a lot of info. Uh, I don't know how we can explain it, but um, just give us a, just a brief history background for us. Yeah, sure. Well, firstly, I'm sorry for all that because there is there's a lot to read and and uh, I know that people it's hard to find time for reading. If you do a job during the day, the last thing you want to do when you finish work is read. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it does take people some time. Look, just a real real quick background for, for me. Uh, born in Melbourne, um, like yourself. Uh, brought up in a middle-class family. Um, family history is, you know, politics. Well, up, you know, up in middle class, but sort of politics and uh, religion. Long, strong history there in terms of members of the family being priests and nuns. So, sort of, t- sort of typical... Uh, Irish Catholic uh, family there that sort of made good. Anyway, uh, went to school, Jesuit school there at Xavier and um, really wasn't too sure what I wanted to do. Just tried my hand at a bit of rock and roll, didn't really work, did a bit of rowing. But uh, I actually fell into uh, politics. I ended up doing a job in Canberra for, for six years working in politics, which was, was interesting. Wow. But but the one constant, I mean, whilst I've gone and done different things in my life and from that I, you know, I ended up working with uh, AMP and um, fell from a great height from that, from that job and uh, what the one constant in my life through this is, is this, this uh, almost this sense of being harassed and being brought up with, with the whole Catholic and priests and nuns in the family. Mm. You're going to, I had to try and filter that out and say, is it just a my reaction to the fact that religion is always around. I mean, it was, when, if we had mass at home, your, your normal bread would be turned into a host. I mean, it was, it, was, it was that kind of normal. It wasn't anything crazy or cultish or anything. But there was this one constant from a young age where I just constantly felt harangued about what am I doing with my life? Mm. And I had experiences in my life where that kept bringing me back. So even though I went and did these different careers, this kept uh, being in the background. And when I actually ended up uh, leaving the uh, financial world and finding myself pretty much having to pick up the pieces, I asked myself the question, well, what, you know, what ultimately is I, am I supposed to do with my life? And, and let me write down what I can honestly, but let me do it without ego. Yeah. So rather than trying to be a, a young star or any of that, I'd got all through that let me just give let me just write honestly down and I'd been collecting stuff already for about five years at that point so then I just started writing and I just started writing honestly and asking key questions you know what is the meaning of life is there actually a is is there truly a a division between the metaphysical and the physical that can never be breached or is that like a deliberate uh, a deliberate trick to keep it all separate so then I went on this journey and what I discovered along the way is much of what I'd been taught was untrue. Uh, they hide the truth in plain sight and basically we're programmed from a young age. From the indoctrination of schools and stuff like that. But with, the, um, like, with all this information you have, um, you've learnt a lot about the, the, the Catholic and, and the church, the Vatican church, and there's a lot um, about the Roman cult. Yep. And... Um, 
we're going to this season at this time of the year where it's the is it the pagan holidays i mean people are confused about christmas they don't know if santa claus is involved with coca-cola um children <laughs> you, you know what i mean all this sort of yeah. stuff and um or the you know when the romans uh, you know can you just give us a brief history i guess when this time in rome um when the church started which was what 741 was it was it what's when it's well, yeah, the, the, the catholic church well there's a lot of there's a lot of mystery thrown around and there's a lot of deliberate confusion thrown around but yeah. the the catholic church wasn't founded in rome it was founded in paris and it was founded by a fellow called charles martel right. and his children yep. and the reason it was founded is that they were disgusted with the corruption of the original church the imperial christian church which we also know as the byzantine empire or the Holy Roman Empire, based out of Constantinople. And when the Pope, because the the king or the emperor of the Imperial Christian Church wasn't called emperor, he was called Pope or Papa, or Papas in Greek. And that's where the word Pope comes from. The Roman cult took that and claimed it as their own. But when uh, Charles Martel was commanded to go to Constantinople and abandon Europe, for uh, to allow the Moors to, to come in, he refused. He said, I'm not going to abandon Europe. I'm not going to abandon uh, the land, Franks at that point, or Saxony. And, of course, he defeated the Moors in two great and famous battles and saved Europe from being overrun by the, the uh, Moors, being the restructured uh, Umayyad, uh, the very, very worst Islamic uh, satanic worshippers. So he, um, and by the way, they had nothing to do with, the, the origin of Islam. These people were evil to the to the core. Mm. So so in 751, his uh, children, because he had passed it by that stage, his uh, three sons basically invaded Rome and re-established this concept that uh, rather than Constantinople being the uh, home and the founding um, site of Christianity, that Rome had always been the site of Christianity. And so they installed a, uh, one of the brothers, Carloman, as uh, Zacharias, as the first. They called him the Vicarious Christi, or the Vicar of Christ. Okay. And then, and then went through this whole scenario that that uh, that Saint Peter was the first uh, Vicar of Christ, and that there'd always been a, a Christian uh, site at Rome, and that uh, Constantinople were the usurpers. So the idea was the idea was was uh, noble. Uh, they created a brand new law. They called it the Sacre Loi, or Sacred Law. And that law redefined the whole concept of nobles. In that law, it reestablished law and order in, in Europe. Uh, it returned the concept of honor or honor price to avoid uh, conflict and, and blood revenge. And it was a very, very uh, positive attempt. And Catholicism at its root was about living life as was intended in the message of Jesus Christ. But as all good intentions, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. By the time of the 11th century, the Franks had pretty much died out. The Saxons had uh, become supreme. And the Italian Lombardy prince families had pretty much uh, got stronger. And Venice had increased its power. So by the 11th century, the Roman cult... Uh, which being a, an operation from Venice, saw the opportunity to seize control. And that's where they took control under a fellow called Gregory the Seventh. took over, and he was the first anti-pope of the Roman cult. So he was like the the, 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 the pope that changed the, the church. This was sort of like um, where he just the naughty one, the satanic one, would you say? Is... Absolutely, yeah. Well, see, he, his, his claim was he claimed to be the Romanus Pontifex, which was a pagan, mm. the most senior pagan priest of ancient Rome. Mm. And uh, he worshipped uh, blood sacrifice, human sacrifice, uh, and worshipped uh, the goddess Kybel, who's also known as Sybil, who's yep. also known as Athena, who's also known as Lady Justice, who's also known as Brittany, uh, who's also now known as Mary, Mary, Queen of Heaven. Yeah, yeah, yeah Cybele. And, and the, the worship of Cybele uh, was that the lower classes uh, were to sacrifice their sexuality to, to be eunuchs, and the upper classes 
were to pretty much uh, live their life in a, a complete orgy. And that was the, the uh, religious structure of Romanus Pontifex. That's, that's interesting stuff. So these people, they, 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 um, this, uh, the Pope, so this is like fertility gods. Is, is, does this go back to sort of like Baal or anything like that? Yeah, absolutely. It's part of the, the structure of Baal, mm. uh, although Baal comes back in when the Sabbateans uh, take control under the Ottoman uh, Kaiser, yep. uh, Ibrahim I. Mm. The, the Sabbateans and the uh, Hasidim come into play in the 17th century. They're very, very recent, in fact, the Sabbateans, and they're the ones that went back to the roots to reclaim a relationship with Baal and Baal Moloch and uh, are completely bonkers, completely clinically insane, these people. Yeah. <laughs> now, with the, yeah, the Baal, Moloch. Um, now, Moloch is an interesting sort of, uh, what, what is it, Alex Jones said when he went to Bohemian Grove, they, they called the the owl Moloch, but that's not this case. The, it's it's a cow, isn't it? The, the yeah, look, um, Baal is a bull. The owl is actually Inanna. The, 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 the owl is the uh, symbol of Ishtar. And if you go and look at any of the ancient ruins throughout, throughout uh, Mesopotamia, Ur, mm. Samaria, the owl is actually the symbol of Kybel, and Kybel is Inanna and Ishtar. It's the same goddess. And what it is, it's the goddess that effectively originates from the, the, the city that invented the short path, which mm. is Ur. Um, the city of Ur has a very checkered past. And in fact, the word Ur became synonymous with a uh, city of sin. Mm. So you see the word Ur being used right throughout ancient world mm. as a descriptor of a, of a city of, of uh, worshipping evil. And But the goddess uh, of Ur was symbolized by uh, two things, by the owl, the wisdom, and by a symbol called the nub, which is the pentagram. Yeah. And, uh, and Inanna coming from uh, from Ur, then was morphed into Ishtar, was morphed into Astarte, was mor morphed into Venus, was then morphed into Kybel. And what the worshippers of, Ky of Kybel and Ishtar used to do is that they would uh, sacrifice children to the goddess. Yep. Um, they would force their younger priests to become eunuchs and sacrifice their sexuality. And it was a blood atonement cult. It was a black magic cult. From the 11th century, um, this is this is where it's the, the church was uh, changed and everything else. And we still are seeing it to this day. Um, um, mainstream media is trying to hide it as much as it is. Uh, the Catholic Church is still is is still in that existence of what it was in the 11th century back with this pope. It's yeah, totally. Yeah. We've got to remember that the Holy See is a private company. Right. I mean, it masquerades as a religion, but it's a private company, and it was formed with the Lombard prince of Italy mm. and the Magyar bloodlines of Venice. And the Magyar are connected into the break, broken up Khazar Empire that stretches from Russia right across into China. So you have these families that have kind of known their history for hundreds and hundreds of years that have run the world and basically fought one another. And uh, the Magyar have mm. probably been, been the trickiest of the lot. And they financed the creation of the Roman cult and then financed the creation of the Holy See. All right. Well, listen, Frank, can you just hold for a second? We're going to go into, there's a lot of information for our listeners out there. And I know I've got a lot of <laughs> texts as well. I'm going to go into a song. Uh, if you can hold on for us there, Frank. Yeah. yeah and no uh, we'll be back with Frank O'Collins from Eucadia. Stay tuned. 